Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs down Cosmic Run Regeneration, which is a push-your-luck dice game where one to four players are trying to run as fast as they can through the cosmos to save as many planets as possible. And the way it works is, you first of all got to decide if you're going to play it the normal competitive mode or co-op or solo. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a solo rundown today, but it pretty much plays the same in every case. Each player, uh, no matter how many players you have, has a, one of their ships starting out trying to reach planets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And we're trying to get to these planets before they blow up because there's going to be constant threat of meteor strikes hitting them. Now, since I'm playing solo, I am actually trying to save all of these planets before they blow up. If I was playing competitive, it doesn't matter if they blow up or not. It's just players are racing to be the first there to get the big 24 points or 30 points or 15 points. And then um, if I'm the first to get there, everybody else gets fewer points depending on how close they got because we're racing. In this game, though, I I am racing against the clock because if any of these plants blow up, it's game over. So, how does it work? Well, the first thing you do on your turn before you reveal an Asteroid Strike card is, if you're playing solo or co-op, you can decide to spend some of your points, and everybody starts with 10 points, you can spend some of your points to deploy a force field. If you think one of these planets is about to blow up, I might be worth spending five points to protect that planet. Or if I spent 10 points, at which point I'd be completely empty, I could protect all the planets. Now, I'm not going to do that right now. And so over the course of the game, I'm going to be trying to earn as many points as possible. Uh, in a competitive game, I earn the points to win. But here, I earn the points so I can have more force fields when I need them. I'm not going to play any force fields now. And now we see the first planet to get hit number five. Okay, so it has been hit once. Um, now, if number five couldn't be hit because I had already made it here and saved the planet, then number six would have been hit. If uh, number six couldn't be hit because I'd gotten there, then number one would be hit. If number one couldn't be hit, the card would just be completely ignored. But as it is, since I haven't gotten any of the planets yet, Planet 5 has taken a hit, and it has gone from being worth 30 points to only 18 points. Now, that only happens in a solo game. Remember, in a competitive game, whoever gets here gets 30 points, and if somebody else only gets it here, they get 8 points, let's say. But anyway, so in the solo game, it's taken a hit. If it takes two more hits, it's game over, plus I can't get as many points off of Planet 5 as I used to be able to. But I still got to save it. Okay, so that's it, and now... My turn really begins. You do an asteroid, see if any plants blow up, and there you lose if it's solo or co-op. Then you roll! Okay, now, I have to use at least one of these dice. I could use all of them, and I'm using them to assign them to any of the six planets to move my ships closer and closer. But I could also assign them to these randomly drawn alien races to get them on side, to help me with re-rolls and stuff like that. Or I could assign these dice to my own little science tech board over here, because the more dice I put here, the more crystals I have, which I can use for powers and whatnot. So what am I going to do? Let's see here. Hmm. Okay, I've got three sixes here. That's pretty cool. Um, if I put all three sixes on planet number three, that means I am guaranteed to move forward one step. Because, as you might imagine, planet three means I need three of a kind to move forward. If I put these two twos here, I'd get to move one towards planet two. If I put this one here, you don't need two. You need two of a kind, three of a kind, four of a kind, or five of a kind for planet two, three, four, or five. For planet one, you just need ones to move forward. So if I just, I could spend all my dice like this, and I'd move to one step closer to each of these planets. But I don't know if that's necessarily the smartest way to go. Because instead, I could use these two planets over here, or these two twos, and recruit this Chronix alien, which on a future turn will let me reroll five dice, which could be a real lifesaver if I'm desperate to do something. So I think, yeah, I'm going to spend my two over here. And now, I could keep spending dice if I wanted, but I don't have to. I have to spend at least one die, and then once I'm done spending dice, I reroll all the dice I've still got. Hmm. You know what? I think I am going to stop here, though. I'm going to put two of a kind here to start working towards that planet. I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to spend this six over here on planet number six. Planet six, which has the longest track to reach, is very, very unique in that um, you, you don't need two of a kind or three of a kind. You actually need unique numbers. Uh, you need five of a kind, four, three, two, or just sing, or ones. For here, the more unique white dice you've got, the more steps you move forward. So if I had taken a one, two, and a six, those are unique white dice. That would be three steps forward. Also, if you assign your yellow die, you may have noticed this is yellow. Anywhere else, the yellow die functions exactly the same as a white die. But if you assign your yellow die to planet six, you get to move forward as many spaces as the die says. And since I've got that six, I want to move forward six spaces. 
So anyway, let's put all these back where they were. Because that means I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You know what? I'm, I'm rethinking this. I'm going to put this 1 over here as well. So that I can move 6 plus 1 unique white color. That's going to move me 7. That's going to be better. All right. So in one roll, I've used all my dice. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes you get dice and you um, assign some of them. And then you re-roll hoping to get additional things. But I'm happy with this. So let's resolve this. I'm not moving towards planet 1. I get to move 1 space towards planet 2 because I use this 2 of a kind. 3, 4, and 5. I skipped all of them. For planet 6, I get to move 1 because that's 1 unique white die plus a 6 on my yellow means 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, boom, 7. These are bonus VP chips, and this one is worth 3 points. Nice. 1, 2, 3. And now that's why I did this rearrangement here, because you know if I'd moved 6, then I'd have to move 1, because on a future turn, if I end up moving 3, let's say, I'd go 1, 2, 3, I'd skip right over it. You have to um, make your movement so that you land exactly on these, and so I just got three more points to spend towards my force fields in the future. So uh, that's that. And then, hey, these guys allowed me to recruit this alien, which on a future turn I can use. You can only use these powers once to reroll up to five dice. A new alien comes out, and that is the first round over. Okay, let's move on to round two. Now, remember, I can spend five to put a force field on one of these planets. There's no reason to do it, though, because even if Planet 5 takes another hit, it'll just be at two hits. It's not until it takes its third hit that I would die. So I'm not going to spend any of my points yet. We'll just let the meteorites fall where they may. Boom. Planet 6 takes a hit. Okay. So it is now worth fewer points if when I make it there, because i got to make it there. It's gone from being worth 10 points to being worth 5 points. Ah! But i still got to get there. All right. So we roll again. Okay, and what do I got? Oh, I got three threes. So, with three threes, I could just lock in moving on this planet. That's pretty cool. Or, if I want to push my luck, I could put these three threes over here on the four of a kind. You say, but that's not four of a kind. I could put those there, and now I could re-roll all of these dice and hope to get another, another three. I could even lock these in on the five. And now, I need to get two more threes, which is pretty dangerous to do. Because remember, every time I roll, if I don't get those threes, I'm going to have to spend these dice someplace else, and I might waste those dice. But that's where the push your luck comes in to Cosmic Run. Because, as you might imagine, the quicker I can get to this planet, the more points. This planet it was worth 30, now it's only worth 18. If it takes another hit, it'll only be worth 8! I want to get those 18 points. So do I just go crazy and, um, you know, and try to get the 3 of a kind? Or do I just double down on what I've already done? I've started working towards 2. Maybe I should just take 2 of a kind, let's say, and take another step. In fact, hey, I could use... Now I'm kind of wasting the power of my yellow die, but this is 2 pair, which means I'd get to move forward two spaces, which means I'd get another one of those bonuses. That's pretty nice. But I'm wasting the yellow, which wants me to move up there. But you know what? Now that this is a little bit weaker... Ah. Yeah, let's just keep on pushing the doubles. And so now, I've spent all the dice. I could spend this five over here and get that alien, but then I roll a single die. A single die... Yeah, okay, let's do it. So I've spent all these. I'm now going to roll again. Whoa. And I get a six. All right. If this had been a one, I could have moved one step forward here. Uh, it's not a pair. It's not three of a kind. It's not four of a kind. It's not five of a kind. But it is a unique number I'm putting there. So I'll move forward one space. Let's resolve again. All righty. Two pairs means I go one, two, and boom, I got another one of these. It's worth only one point. Drat. Okay, but I'm getting closer to getting the full 15 points off of this before it gets hit. So I spent those. I move forward one space over here. And I've recruited my second alien. Hooray! Now this one, when I use him, he gives me an extra die for one round. So I could be rolling six dice. So that can be a pretty big deal. And now there's another use for these aliens as well. Anytime you want on your turn, you can dismiss them. You can tell them, beat feet, get out of here, aliens. And if I dismiss one, that will give me one point. One measly point. But if I dismiss sets of them, I can get more points. If I have a pair, I can get four, five, or seven points. Now, if you're playing competitively, the first player to discard a pair gets seven. The third player to do it gets four points. But in this solo game, it goes the other way. If I discard a pair, I get four points. If I do it a second time, five points. A second time, six points. So getting these aliens and then using their powers and then discarding them can get me more points that I need to help save these planets. Okay. So anyway, 
And you know, but these are different. This is a uh, an orange and a purple, which means if I have three unique ones, that's five points. If I have five unique ones, that's ten points. Okay. So yeah, I've done some recruiting, and we're on to the third round. And again. If I wanted, I could spend five or 10 points to protect one planet or all planets. I'm not gonna do it, because I'm saving my points for when I'm really in trouble. And planet number four has taken a hit. And it's gone from being worth 24 points to 16 points. No! And then we roll, we roll! Okay, and actually wait a minute. Before I roll, you know what? I am going to use the, this Daha to roll this as well. So this guy is used, okay. And let's see, oh, I've got four ones. Hey, that's four of a kind. Or it's two pairs to get two more steps towards this planet. But I'm wasting my yellow! Because I want my, my yellow could get me big moves like you saw before. <sighs> Maybe I take a pair. And, um... This is interesting. I could. I mean, hey, I've got this little straight here. I could go one, two, three, four. That's four unique colors. Although, uh, on the red, so that's not that great. <sighs> I feel like since I'm using the extra die, though, I should go for a big one, like, you know, trying to get to these plants, because I gotta get to all the plants before time runs out, before they blow up. Now, if I wanted, I could use this guy one time, and re I could reroll all five of these dice. Or I could use my crystal I've earned to reroll two dice. And now also, remember before, I used that, that last die I had to move forward one? Instead, I could have put that last die over here to give myself a second crystal, because if I have two crystals, I can reroll five dice. If I have three crystals, I can increase or decrease the value of a die. If I have four crystals, I can flip a die. And if I have five crystals, I can give myself an extra die. So earning these crystals is another great use for your dice if, they, if things don't work out. If you push, um, if you decide not to push your luck and try and go for individuals, let's see. I say I don't want to. I'm going to try and get another one. I don't want to waste this. I want to save this for over here. So I've spent some. Let's re-roll. I want to get at least another one over here, but I don't want to be with my yellow. Okay. Urgh. Urgh. All right. Now here's another thing too. If I go on ahead and put my say this, I, I rolled it and I say, oh, let's use the yellow six right now. As soon as you place your yellow on planet six. Your turn is over. It doesn't matter. Um, so I don't want to do this until it's the last die I place. Although, I me mean, heck. Oh, no, this was a three. I, I, here's another pair. So now I've got two pairs, one, two. And if I can just get a one, I can make it to this planet this turn. So let's say I lock those in, and now let's keep re-rolling with these and hope to get another one and a high value for my six to get towards planet six. Ah! Ugh! That's not quite what I wanted, but I'll take it. All right, so I've got the other pair. I'm going to make it there. We're going to save that planet. And now, I could re-roll this five, because if I could turn it into a one, I could start moving over here, or I could move another space towards planet six, or like I was talking about, I could give myself a... Uh... But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to re-roll it again. But this is my last roll, because if I get a one over here, I can get a second alien. Then I could discard a pair of aliens and get more points. I got a one. Let's spend it over there instead of towards planet one. All right, let's resolve this. That's three pair. Boom! And say goodbye to my extra die. One, two, three. And I just got 15 points. 5, 10, 15. I have a lot of points to spend on my force fields. Hooray! And now, from now on, if a two gets drawn, we ignore it and look at the next number. Okay. And what else did I do? Oh, I got myself another alien, of course. So I can use that. Uh, this is, once again, I can give myself a second die. Let's do it again. And let's go for the next round. Uh, still, nobody's at two, so I'm just going to let the damage keep piling up. And planet number three takes a hit. Drop from 18 to 12 points. I'm rolling six dice. Let's go! Let's roll. Okay. Five of a kind, or three of a kind. And the one, and the two, and the three. Hmm. So, what am I going to do? All right, well, i got to start working on something else. I could keep on pushing hard on six. Because, hey, I've got a three, four, five. That's like three. And now I want to get ones and twos. I mean, I could get up to six. I mean, if I could get a one or a two or a six, I could make a big move on this. And I want to move exactly one, two, three, four spaces. I want to move four spaces so I can land on this. So I'll do that, and I'll just re-roll these. I want to see a one, a two, or a six on white so that I can move the exact spaces I need. Let's see what I got. All righty. That's what I wanted. Boom. I'm, all right, I'm stopping with this. That's going to get me over here. And um, now I could just, I could deploy these. I could recruit another. Let's recruit another. And now I've got three of these aliens. And if I do three of a kind, I can get eight points. Yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, let's re-roll these. 
I want to see a high value six now to, no, no, I don't, because I want exactly four. I don't want to put yellow over here. Let's see if I can reroll these and do something else good. Let's get a pair. No, I don't need a pair. Let's get some ones. All right, there's a one. I'll move up here. And now I can roll this one more time. Let's see if I get a one. No, it's a five. All righty, let's come over here and give myself a second crystal. Move forward one space. And move forward one, two, three, four, and I've locked this in. It's just a point. Ah, but now I've got 30 points to spend. Okay. And now also, um, I could discard these, but I'm waiting until I get and use this guy because then I'll have three of a kind, which will be eight points. So going to my next round, I'll use it again. But before we use it, see, nobody's been hit twice, so I know no planet can blow up. Let's just let it build up. And hey, planet one gets, uh, gets the hit. So, so far, nobody's been hit twice, and that's fine. Because once somebody hits twice, then i got to start thinking about using my force fields. But as it is, I'm going to roll. And off I go again. And this turn, uh, now that I've used all these, I'm going to turn them in anytime I want my turn to get eight points. So, uh, boom, one, two, three. I can really start powering up my force field now to try, because I've still got a long ways to go, and how do I keep using these dice? Is I keep pushing my luck on this cosmic run. So, folks, that is the rundown. This is a very cool, fun, fast little game. Now, it's basically the sequel to Cosmic Run, which worked very similar. The, the core push your luck element of trying to get to planets one, uh, you know, these plants was the same, but this planet six is a whole new thing, and that really changes stuff up. The being able to jettison aliens to get other bonuses. Um, the It's interesting, compared to Cosmic Run, Cosmic Run had a more complex tech tree for building up, but it had less complexity with the aliens, and it didn't have this cool Planet 6. So this is overall, I would say, a nice improvement on the original Cosmic Run, which was still a very nice game as well. And you know what? Steve Finn and his family, his kids, uh, that worked on this together. This is a great Push your luck, family-friendly game. Um, it is at its best, definitely, as a competitive game because you really feel the pressure trying to get to these plans for everybody else. But the solo and the co-op work quite nicely as well. Basically, the way that the co-op works is multiple players are trying to get to the planet. As soon as one player gets to the planet, it's uh, safe. And what you do is you take the total points for the player who made it and uh, the points for the other players who didn't quite make it and you average those points together to see how many points you get towards the force field. So everybody has a vested interest in trying to rush up, but you can, everybody can't make it, so you do have to pick and choose where everybody goes. Plus, in the co-op game, we get cool special powers that enhance our ability to do things like share crystals, share aliens, peek at the upcoming asteroids, and stuff like that. So the co-op is pretty neat. And then, like I said, the competitive works really, really well right out of the gate. And if you want to feel for what the competitive feels like, go check out my run-through of the original Cosmic Run. Like I said, there's not all the same features, but still, the core push your luck is there in Cosmic Run Regeneration. That's the rundown, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye. Uh,